most editing projects need some kind of music, whether it's a royalty-free track or a song from your friend's band. Maybe you're cutting a demo reel or a highlight video. Regardless, most videos are going to need some kind of music. And one of the first things that people really learn when they're doing editing is cutting down a music track because most tracks or songs are longer or shorter than you need them to be for the edit. And so you either got to extend it or you got to cut it down. So I'm going to show you how I do it. It's a pretty straightforward process. I'm sure a lot of people already know how to do this, but even some of the veteran editors I know don't do it um, as perfectly as they should. So and we'll start right here. I've got uh, this song by Penguin Prison called Never Gets Old. It's a new song that I found that I happen to like, so I figured I'd use it for this example. It's kind of funky, kind of cool. I encourage you to check it out if you're into that sort of thing. If not, well, you're going to have to deal with it for <laughs> the example here. So you've got this track, you know, it's right around three minutes, as most songs usually are. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go through and add markers to the beat. Now, I typically do this kind of every four measures. You could do it every measure. You could do it on every beat, whatever makes the most sense to you. But I like to do it every four measures uh, just so I get those uh, main chunks of the song. You'll notice every uh, music track follows a pattern of some kind, so you're going to want to be editing around that pattern and not breaking it, because that's going to make your edit really noticeable. You want this to be smooth and seamless, as if the song were actually that short or that long if you're extending it. So I'm going to go through here, add markers to this track, and I'll see you once I'm done with that. Okay, so I've added all the markers to my timeline or my music track, and you can see they're evenly spaced because it maintains a steady beat throughout the song. I'm sure there's automation software out there that detects the beat and you can do something like that, but I like to do it by hand because for a three-minute song, it doesn't take that long, and you can kind of feel, get a, get a rhythm uh, for the song, and you can kind of see, okay, I would probably want to make my edits here. For this one, I probably, let's say we're using this for a demo reel or a highlight video of some kind. Maybe we want to cut out the second verse and then the second repetition of the chorus just to keep the core song intact, but we want to just shorten it. So what I would do is I'd go in here and I kind of remember, and you can kind of even see it right here where it gets a little louder. That's where the chorus starts. And... We'll just check that and make sure. Yep. And here's where it goes back into the verse. And again here, it goes to the chorus. And so what we can do is instead of going to this first chorus, we can cut all this out and skip right to that second time through the chorus. And by doing that, we'll save about trim a minute off of this song. So rather than, you know, three and a half minute song, we're now down to 215. Now, this isn't perfect by any means, because when I was going through adding those markers, there's human error. You know, my timing isn't going to be perfect. So I always go in here and I check to make sure that my waveforms are matching up. And an easy way to do that is drop, you know, drop your split down to the next track and you can kind of pull left and right to see if everything's lining up and look at that i actually was pretty pretty close almost exact by uh in terms of frames anyway so um this would actually probably sound pretty good if we played through so let's just check that and see what it sounds like So I'll play that again. It's almost perfect, but you can hear a little bit uh, where it kind of pops because it's not quite perfect. One way to fix that is to add just a simple um, cross uh, fade or a constant gain transition. I have this set as my default under your audio transitions under crossfade. Uh, you can do constant power, exponential fade. I like constant gain the best, so that's the one I set as my default. And under your system preferences, uh, or sorry, your premier preferences, you can go to general and you can set the default duration 
for audio transitions and for video transitions. So I've got mine set to 0.15 seconds just so it's real short and quick. I think that's actually four frames and typically I'm editing on a 24 frames per second timeline. This one happens to be 30 frames per second so that's why you see that it's not quite even on both sides. But we could just fix that and oh, it was five so we can go seven, you know, whatever makes the most sense. Maybe in something like three and we'll try that. And that's almost seamless. No one's, you know, when you cover that with video and maybe other sound effects or, you know, other sound bites, whatever, no one's going to notice this. But if you want to be real, real picky, because as you can see, if I come in here, delete that transition, drop this down, pull this over, you can see it's not exactly lined up. It's off by, you know, like half a frame or something. And most of the time that might not be an issue, but just so you can see how to do it, if you go, it's not under here settings, it's actually under this little menu, which I believe used to be over here on previous versions of Premiere. Maybe it's just my layout, but it's right here. This three, this three bars, you can, where is it at? Show audio time units. And basically what that does, it allows you to edit sub frame um, for audio. So if you click that, you'll see the timeline change to where we don't have frames anymore. But now we can get real close in here and we can actually move at the sub frame level. So if you really, really want to be particular about how you're editing your music and your stuff, this is how to do it. It is not the most um, fun thing to do because if you if you start scrubbing yeah that's not good you don't want that so um, let's put this over a little bit there we go that looks pretty much dead on now we can play this transition again and we'll turn the time units off so we don't get that terrible scrubbing noise and we'll try this out can't even hear it. And there's actually a hard edit there. We could, you know, just for safety, add a little crossfade. Ooh. I think that actually made it worse. I don't like that. Let's make it real short. Cool. And that's what you find. It's just a lot of playing it, checking it, making sure it's right. But now we've got the song cut down. And the really handy thing about this is um, now that we have all these markers, if you want to sync and edit to the beat, these are kind of those main um, impacts of every um, set of four. Uh, is it measures, bars? I don't know. Whatever it is, whatever musical term it is. Um, we've also got the ending. Uh, marker here. Oh, and I should have mentioned the way I was adding those markers. I have it set up um, under keyboard shortcuts. If you search marker, um, I have, I come from Final Cut, so I know it's terrible. Um, but my keyboard layout is the Final Cut one, which is great because you can customize your keyboard to whatever you want. So more power to you if that's what you do. But by default, it doesn't let you add markers to clips, at least uh, not the last time I checked. So, um, this add marker right here usually doesn't have this set to M. That's how it was in Final Cut, so that's what I'm used to. So I just make it M, and that lets me select a clip and add markers as I'm going. You might have run into some problems if your computer isn't fast enough or your hard drive isn't fast enough to where you'll be adding markers and it'll actually show up delayed. Thank you for thank you Premiere for saving my project. How very nice of you. Um, if you have a slow machine, you might run into problems adding markers. Um, there's not much else to do other than just kind of close all background processes and try and uh, optimize your machine so that you can play back. It shouldn't be a problem, but you know, there's probably like 1% of you who are editing on some old dinosaur computer that uh, it'll be a problem. So anyway, um, the same thing could be said if we wanted to extend a song. So you could even get real creative with this where um, maybe you label your uh, verses, you know, one color, and then 
And then, you know, you label your uh, chorus a different color. Um, you know, you get the idea. That way you can see visually what part of the song is happening when, and you can copy paste stuff over and just line up those beats. It's pretty easy to do once you know how to do it, but there's a lot of times where people, you know, they're editing something and they're like, oh man, this song is five minutes long. Guess I'm stuck. Better make a five minute video. Well, don't make a five minute video. Uh, cut it down to the length that it needs to be. That's going to be the most effective. And uh, now you know how to do that. So if there's anything I missed or any other questions you have, just let me know in the comments. But hopefully I taught you some uh, cool new tips or maybe it was just all repetitive and you knew everything there was. In that case, I'm sorry you watched this long. You should have ditched sooner.